Let me, uh, 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 I, I, I noticed that you're taking everything down. Uh, when I was a prosecutor, we were doing a case, and you wanted to get ready for the next day, you'd ask for dailies. So I'd like a daily of what he just said about me, all right? So, <laughs> hey, it is great to, uh, it's great to be with you all. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to say some things about John in, in a little bit, um, but um, I want to say some other things. Uh, 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 it's tough out there. Uh, nobody knows it better than organized labor. Uh, you've been fighting uh, in the trenches uh, in good times and in bad, um, and uh, I want you to know that I very much appreciate the work that you're doing. In a day and age when people seem to be running on the Bay for office on the basis of dis dismantling uh, a middle class, of making it harder for a middle class to move forward. When you can look back in time in this nation's history and actually understand that over the last 20, 20 years, for the first time in our history, the middle class has not benefited in any way by the economic growth that has transpired and taken hold in our country. When you can look at statistics and understand that the top 1% is doing very, very, very well. And yet, and yet, you watch the ongoing onslaught with respect to organized labor and those who are not in organized labor but are holding down jobs that are commensurate with organized labor. You see what's trying to be done to take away rights, take away the right of negotiation and arbitration and organization. This headlong rush that people are trying to cause uh, in this country to make it harder for you all to do your job. So when an invitation like this comes across my desk, I'm more than happy to accept it. Hey, listen, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a house where my mother fought for years to organize. I grew up in a house where I was the youngest of eight kids. That gives rise to some sharp elbows, I know, and sometimes I don't always use them appropriately. But more often than not, I have used them on your behalf, uh, and uh, I'm happy to have done that. I spoke to uh, the firefighters yesterday. I was uh, out of state and did a phone hookup, uh, and I pointed out that in almost every other state in the country, governors have tried to balance the budget on the backs of municipal government, cutting back uh, as they did in New Jersey on local aid, cutting back on support for education, cutting back on grants going to municipalities. We didn't do that in this state. We didn't do it because I understood, first and foremost, that the folks that would be required to pay that price were lo local ta property taxpayers and policemen and firemen and teachers and, yes, even school nurses. I understood that, um, that we needed to find a different way a Connecticut way of taking care of our problems. And a Connecticut way of taking care of our problems is, A, look forward. Understand that we have an obligation to build a better place and to have the infrastructure that supports it. Number two, be committed to a growing middle class. Not try to shrink it, not try to cut it, not try to do away with it, but be committed to a expanding middle class. And then finally, be concentrating on our young people in our educational systems and in our institutions as they are spread out throughout this state. I can stand here and report that we are now making solid progress. When I became governor of the state of Connecticut, we had the largest per capita deficit of any of the states in the nation. At $3.6 billion, the biggest deficit on a per person basis. And yet we are closing now budgets uh, in the black. And yes, uh, we did that in many different ways, and many people were required to make sacrifices, but the reality is that we are on a road to recovery. You add 41,000 private sector jobs in a little over two and a half years, that's a pretty good start. It's not good enough, and you don't represent enough of, a, of them. But there is a certain reality now that we're hitting the ground and running forward, not backwards. And let me be very, very clear, we've got a lot more work to do, and we're going to continue to do that work. So I want to I say right up front 
that one of the reasons that from the 20s or the 10s to the 20s to the 30s to the 40s to the 50s to the 60s to the 70s, we had an expanding working class is because of the people in this room or who would have been in this room in the 10s and the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. And therefore, we cannot go back. We have to fight the fight. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. We have to fight the fight. Uh, let me be also very clear that in Connecticut, we're not going to pass laws that make it harder for you to do your job. In fact, we're going to pass laws that make it easier for you to do your job. <laughs> and, and we're not just talking about organized labor. One of the things that we've done this year is taken a note from the president's agenda uh, and committed to getting to a $9 per hour uh, minimum wage. It's important that we do that. That's why even earlier than we did that, we took on the issue of paid sick leave. The idea, the idea that people were forced to go to work sick, go to work in nursing homes, go to work in hospitals, go to work in daycare centers, sick because they were afraid that they would lose their job if they didn't show up makes no sense at all. In fact, it makes us sick. So this is an important battle that we've won on a, as a state. This is a battle that we've won at a state that has not been won elsewhere, although municipalities like San Francisco and New York are moving in that direction as well. It's also why we passed an earned income tax credit in the state of Connecticut. Working people who are working very hard but not making enough deserve a helping hand. 180,000 families in the state of Connecticut have shared an earned, earned income tax credit, which incentivizes work, doesn't punish work. That's an important thing as well. Time and time again, as you all have come forward with your own particular interests. We've tried to address them. I see people from the building trades in this room. There have never been more PLAs in the state of Connecticut than there are today. Let's be very clear about that. I see health care workers. I, I joined the organization effort at uh, Norwich Hospital, not so far from here. Just before coming into this room, I sat down with the folks from L&M, whose button uh, uh, I wear. This is a fight worth having uh, to make sure that jobs are protected in our state. It's one of the reasons that we made it possible to organize people who work in homes, because I know what's going on. I know what the regulations say. If you only work a certain number of hours, you don't get this or you don't get that. And so everyone's required to take work a cer certain number of hours here and a certain number of hours there and a certain number of hours there. And all of a sudden, they never worked enough hours in any one place to get the privileges, to get the rights, to get the responsibilities that they deserved to have, as well as a decent wage and a decent future. That's why we took that step. I'm, I'm well aware what goes on in a lot of uh, child care facilities in, in our state, where, again, where jobs are broken up, where people weren't able to negotiate on their own behalf. Those two groups can now organize, and in fact, we are talking and having negotiations with both groups. Now, I, I want to say to Lori and to Sal and to a new leadership Team, congratulations on all that is coming about and all that lays before us in the future. But now I'd like to turn for a moment uh, and talk about John. Now, John and I have not always agreed. He sometimes likes to remind me of that. I sometimes like to remind him of that. Uh, but let me tell you, he has been a lion on behalf of organized labor, on behalf of the AFL-CIO, on behalf of working people organized and unorganized, on behalf of a rising uh, uh, lower class who aspires to be a middle class and a middle class who aspires to do better. It hasn't really made that much difference because if we raise everybody from whatever level they are, then it raises us. That's who we are. That's what we are. We're Americans and we understand that. And John is a patriot and a labor leader 
beyond compare. He loves this country deeply, and therefore he appreciates what hard work is, and that hard work in our country must be rewarded. Otherwise, otherwise our democracy can be in danger. He understands at his very core how important this battle has been and how important it will continue to be. He's been an ally on so many issues. We've worked so, so hard together in so many different ways. Some of the legislation, just a small portion of what we've accomplished, I just talked to you about, and every step of the way, John, was there in those battles. We are a better state for his having been with us for 25 years. And I know, John, you get a little nervous about this because nobody's quite used to having as many nice things said about them while they're still alive as we're all going on and doing. <laughs> but since you can't be there at any other time, and unless you're alive, you might as well hear it. It'll be an open, be an open casket, he reminds me. That's a little Irish humor. But I, I, I want to be very clear that, that uh, uh, I'm proud of John Olson. I'm proud of what's been accomplished because of the people in this room and the people that you represent. I'm proud to, to know that the labor movement in Connecticut is strong and vital and not under attack. And all of that can be attributed to the hard work of my good friend, John Olson. And I wanted to deliver the first message, but I absolutely wanted to deliver that second message. We are better for his having been part of this campaign. So John, let me be... Let, let, me, let me be very clear, John, that uh, uh, I have appreciated all that you've accomplished, um, and I appreciate all that you will continue to accomplish uh, in the future. Um, uh, uh, the American labor movement, not just in Connecticut, owes a debt of gratitude to you. Uh, I owe a debt of gratitude to you, John. I wouldn't be here uh, but for your hard work um, as well. So from one guy who's from the same part of the state that you're from, I just want to say thank you and God bless you. And let's honor John, not in words, but by getting the job done. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you.